It appears we are nearing yet another round of conference realignment. The ACC appears to be in mortal peril. What does that mean for BYU? What does that mean for the Big 12? I actually think it's a good thing. I'll explain. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you who are everydayers right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto is your team every day. And as such, we are your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. Uh, some of you probably saw this news. Hopefully all of you saw this news. But Clemson has filed suit in South Carolina uh, to essentially uh, challenge the ACC's grant of rights and try and uh, break themselves out of what they see as an unconscionable, is one of the terms they use, an unenforceable, uh, essentially, grant of rights uh, from the conference. Let's just break it down this way. They are joining Florida State as the two universities so far from the Atlantic Coast Conference to challenge the conference and try and get themselves out of what they see is something that's just untenable for them as a university. Now, these are two of the more tradition-rich programs in the ACC. Uh, they have national titles in their history. Obviously, they are going to be the quote-unquote big dogs of this conference, and they are trying to throw their weight around. The situation is that both of these universities, as it looks, Clemson is estimating they'd have to pay 140 million million dollars to exit uh, from the ACC currently, which like, once again, they're trying to say that's unenforceable in their lawsuit against the league. But also there is a grant of rights clause that they signed uh, not once, but twice in 2013 and 2016 that lock up uh, their uh, media rights. Uh, it's controlled by the ACC uh, under the current contract that once again, they willingly signed at that point. It is locked up to the middle part of next decade. Now, is the ACC at a disadvantage even compared to the Big 12 right now with how their media rights are, are being uh, laid out? Absolutely. That's why these universities are trying to jailbreak themselves out of this conference. If this goes through, and I fully expect it to, I'll be very frank about this. You don't see Florida State file suit. You don't see Clemson file suit. And I'm assuming in short order, I could see a, a program or a university like North Carolina, Virginia, et cetera, on down the line in the SEC file suit to try and jailbreak themselves out of what they see is once again, an untenable situation for themselves as, the, as it stands for this conference. If that happens, and I fully expect it to, and it'll kick off yet another round of conference realignment, we have already seen a mass consolidation of power, resources, money, on down the line, go towards the Big Ten and the SEC. It's it's completely clear. The college football playoff new contract was officially uh, announced by ESPN and the CFP committee. Uh, it is going to pay $1.3 billion with a B, $1.3 billion annually. And the two big conferences, speaking of the SEC and the Big Ten, are going to get 58% of the revenue annually. It comes out to about $22 million per school uh, when it comes to the annual payout. The ACC, uh, as currently constituted, is slated to get about 17 percent or between 13 and 14 million dollars per school and then the big 12 which byu is a member of is going to get about 12 just north of 12 million dollars you have about 15 percent of the annual revenue so it is absolutely clear there's a consolidation of power between the big 10 and the sec and they're continuing to do that if the ACC, once again, does blow up, you will see the, the skeleton of the ACC picked clean by the uh, SEC and the Big Ten. Whatever programs they want, they'll go after. Here's where it gets fun for BYU and the Big 12. Yet again, they've seen the Pac-12 fall apart before their very eyes. And if the ACC, once again, does fall apart in relatively short order, the Big 12 stands yet again as a conference that's going to withstand a lot of the negatives and the bad things happening in conference realignment. And they're going to be that quote unquote cockroach that just doesn't say die. They're that they're going to survive the, the nuclear Holocaust as it were of conference realignment and come out on the other side. It appears because frankly, the big 12 doesn't have schools that the big 10 and the sec are trying to pick off right now. Could that happen down the line? Yes, it could. But right now, 
if the ACC, and once again, I will reiterate, I fully expect these lawsuits at some point. I don't, I don't care what it is. There's somehow, some way, the, SEC, the ACC schools are going to get themselves out of those situations, out of that conference, and you're going to see it just blow up before your very eyes. And once again, the Big 12 is going to withstand another quote unquote uh, a big name conference uh, potentially going down in flames, and they will be right there, and BYU is right there in the mix. If you're a Cougar fan, be ecstatic. The BYU is a member of the Big 12 Conference right now. It is a very, very stable uh, place as currently constituted. It could change. It absolutely could change. But as currently uh, kind of laid out, the Big 12 is about as stable as it could be considering the circumstances for uh, college football and just overall in a conference. Yes, the Big Ten and the SEC are going to continue to consolidate power. But if the ACC goes down in flames, just like the Pac-12 did, the Big 12 is just standing over there like, hey, we're still here, guys. And that is the positive. Yes, you're going to see BYU continue to be a part of this conference. That is that that is the good news to take out of all of this. Don't don't be uh, all doomsayer dooms doomsday. I should say don't be all doomsday saying, oh, what, they're coming for they're coming for the Big 12 next. You know what? Like I said, the Big 12 is not quote unquote attractive enough quote unquote uh, to the Big Ten and the SEC right now. Could that change if they do pick the carcass of the ACC clean? Yeah, maybe so, but it just seems like at, at this juncture, the Big 12 is yet uh, going to be standing there at the end of this. And I will also add this. Brett Yormark has proved uh, multiple times in his relatively short run as Big 12 commissioner. This is a guy who maneuvers very, very well. He reads the tea leaves extremely well, and he gets out ahead of things. Could he be a preemptive uh, strike? Could he make a preemptive strike? I guess I, I should state uh, when it comes to maybe picking off some of those quote unquote big dogs from the ACC. Could he go to Clemson? Could he go to Florida State and say, OK, if you can get, get yourselves out of this. Come be part of our conference and help us become the third power player in this uh, triangle that it would create of a uh, college football. Would there be programs that would say thanks, but no thanks? Yeah, probably. And I would Florida State and Clemson probably among them. They want to probably be with those big dogs in the SEC or the Big Ten. But can you get maybe a Miami out there? Could you get a Virginia? Can the thing about this is there is opportunity that is going to be laying at the doorstep of the Big 12. And knowing what I know of Brett Yormark, I believe that he will be poised and ready to strike while the iron is hot. And he will do his absolute darndest to make sure that the BYU and the overall Big 12 conference continue to be a force. Uh, in college football and in college athletics, no matter uh, what the SEC and the Big Ten think, they will continue to be there. They'll uh, be that uh, guy that you just can't get, you can't shake. And that is a, that's not a bad place to be because the Big 12, once again, is as stable as it can be. BYU fans, all of you know how long BYU pined for the opportunity to play high level football, to be a part of the Power Five, not the Power Four. And if the ACC does blow up as I expected to, what the power three are we going to call it the the power triangle i don't know what we're going to call it but the good news is byu is part of the mix they're in the in club and they just got to keep doing their thing and i think all will be well at least it appears on paper right now until the next whatever earth shattering move in conference realignment happens but it looks like once again the big 12 and byu by extension are on relatively stable footing as yet another power conference appears poised to just go down and that I'm a tradition guy. I get that. I don't like seeing the PAC 12 and the ACC go by the wayside as it stands, but I'm also a realist and this is where things are going. So get with the times and BYU. It appears uh, them being in the big 12 conference. It's a really, really good place to be uh, as it, as it stands right now. Uh, we'll see what happens. So keep an eye on this. It's absolutely worth watching, and I fully expect the ACC. Th these lawsuits don't get filed without somebody telling these universities, hey, here's how we're going to do this. Maybe it brings the ACC to the bargaining table. Maybe it uh, opens up uh, an opportunity. I, I don't know what it's going to do, but there will be moves and fully expecting another round of conference realignment and We'll see where things land at the end of the day. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we're going to get back to some more BYU-specific stuff, BYU basketball in particular. The Cougars headed into a matchup against the Duquesne Dukes tomorrow out in Omaha. I'm, I've still got, uh, every time I hear Omaha, I cannot shake the Peyton Manning uh, audible that goes off in my head. But we'll talk about an interesting uh, point uh, that uh, one of our listeners asked me about uh, in terms of BYU's offensive philosophy. How has it morphed? How has it uh, kind of molded BYU into who they are today? We'll We'll talk about all that as we continue on right here 
on Locked On Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends, a new friend over at Better Together. Now, that sounds like a really uh, unique name, but it's B-E-T-T-O-R, Together. And the point is, the Better Together is the first cooperative daily fantasy application, and they want to make it essentially a, a great experience for existing DFS or new DFS players with a social twist. You can play with a friend or a teammate and have extra fun while watching the sports you'd be watching otherwise, and at the same time, cash in. Now, that's the that's the the win-win scenario in all of this makes sure that DFS is fun alone, but like a lot of things, it's better when you do it uh, together or with your friends. It also creates a shared experience. Splitting a contest entry gives the feeling of being connected. Even when you're apart, potentially with a friend living in another state, etc. you can still compete uh, together while you're watching the games. You, like I said, you'd all, most of us will be watching anyways. Gives an experienced players an immersive way to learn about DFS, teaming up and following the lead of experienced players teammates and friends also can help you learn the ropes and obviously have success early on as you play DFS. The best part about it, my friends, is they want to make it as simple as possible for you guys. So download Better Together today from the App Store and sign up using the promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. You heard that right. Remember the code Locked On uh, because winning alone is fun, but it's better together and obviously it's a great way to go about it so once again go uh download the better together app today once again use that promo code locked on for that chance to win over a thousand dollars uh from our friends at better together it's a really really fun way to play daily fantasy sports so check it out that's better together Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Now, passion, drive, and patience. So what brings home the winning trophies also what brings your, uh, makes your ride or die alive. Uh, and the best part is eBay Motors has everything to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered, my friends. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber not cash more importantly with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win with our friends at ebay motors keep your ride or die alive today at ebaymotors.com that's eligible item eligible items only exclusions apply and ebay guarantee fit is only available to us customers but get started today with our friends over at ebay motors Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? I'm, I know I am. Uh, if you had to turn all the t volume down with all the shouting that seems to be going on, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring in the biggest stories without all of the screaming going on. We're all about uh, just getting in the nuts and bolts of the news of the day. Locked On Sports today brings you all the can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast network and of course the motto is your team every day we got you covered so that's locked on sports today all right let's talk some byu basketball now uh i uh, on yesterday's podcast we were talking a little about byu uh football with connor pay and uh there was a question actually put up there that talked about basketball that i wanted to address here so uh it comes from our friend outside view 9052 he says jake i recently read an article in the salt lake tribune that stated that coach brown and uh, he, he's talking about keegan brown who is byu's official title at uh, keegan brown is the director of uh director of video and analytics strategy for the byu basketball program so make with the question here uh, from a friend outside view. He said that Coach Brown apparently used analytics and other uh, devices to help develop this offense as well as the approach to getting offensive rebounds for the BYU basketball team. If this article is correct, have you ever reported these facts? Wondering why this is not more widely known and why the Deseret News or Coach Pope himself didn't describe the background of this offense. Now, I can say this. Uh, Coach Pope has alluded to it many times. Now, I, I may not have directly reported on it before, but I am fully aware of how Keegan Brown has been very in influential in BYU uh, and their overall philosophy. He actually is a guy who has uh, studied, I'm talking the to the nth degree, the, the math that goes into college basketball. And this is so nerdy. Let me be very, very upfront about this, is that it can get so monotonous and so technically detailed that your eyes would roll back into the back of your skull and you'd be like, oh my gosh, shut up, Hatch. Let's stop talking about this. But let me just uh, break it down this way. The philosophy BYU came up with, knowing going into the Big 12 Conference that they were going to be an, at an athletic disadvantage. I'm not breaking any news to anybody out here. BYU is far and maybe uh, the, the least athletic team 
in the conference. So BYU needed to find a way to have an advantage that other teams simply didn't have because they weren't going to have the type of athletes that the Houston's or the, or the Kansas's of the world are going to have on an annual basis. You have to differentiate yourself. And also, I'll give a shout out to post Jimmer, uh, Steve Pierce. He's also been a guy who's been crowing about this for years now, it feels like. And the whole idea was the BYU said, okay, our philosophy offensively is going to be we are going to shoot more threes than everybody else in the world. We're going to make more threes, and therefore we're going to have a numerical or math advantage when it comes to scoring in these games. Yes, are there going to be times when the math doesn't math when you shoot those threes, you don't make them? Yes, we've seen that this year against Oklahoma State. You can think about the different games. BYU did not shoot the three well. They have lost those games. There are many other games. Look at the Kansas game, I think is the foremost. When BYU is making their threes, they can be literally, it feels like anybody in front of them. So the whole idea of the way that this offense was formulated is it's, as uh, Bill Self, it's very an NBA uh, type offense. It's either you shoot the three or you're attacking the rim. And I love the way that BYU is running this offense. Let me be very clear about that as well. The idea of it is absolutely genius because, once again, it takes advantage of what BYU's perceived or overall strengths are. What are those? Shooting. And then, as you mentioned, the offensive rebounding. BYU understood that they needed to find a way to generate extra possessions if they wanted to shoot the stated goal of 30 or 35 three-pointers a game. Well, guess what? You're going to have to get some offensive rebounds, and they call it wedging. And in the story that... Uh, uh, Kevin Reynolds, I probably should have said that up front. Kevin Reynolds did a really, really good story on Keegan Brown and how this philosophy came together. He and Cahill Fennell, who is BYU's, for lack of a better term, a defensive coordinator on the basketball program, they essentially send four guys to the glass and they don't necessarily, they're not just trying to kind of find out where that ball is going. They are boxing out and they're trying to get extra possessions by getting offensive rebounds and they call it wedging. And the idea is that the four guys go to the glass, they find a guy to box out and essentially you're just trying to get that ball back on offense and give yourself an extra opportunity to score points. I actually think it's absolutely a, a genius level move that Keegan Brown uh, uh, went to Coach Pope on this. And also, let's also be very clear. Keegan Brown proposed it to Mark Pope and Mark Pope said, signed off on it and said, let's do this thing. So it's, it, it is the brainchild of Keegan Brown, who once again is not an assistant coach. He's on the staff at BYU, but he had this idea. He proposed it to Mark Pope in the story. They said it was a two day interview essentially. And he laid out how he wanted to go about this. And the first year, which was the final year in the West Coast conference last year let's just put it this way the results were not there the math was not mathing that keegan brown promised mark pope uh and in the story keegan also said that he had to kind of essentially beg and plead for mark pope to kind of stay the course bring in ali khalifa understanding that he was the linchpin as it writes in that story uh to be the guy that would really unlock this byu offense well it sure looks like he unlocked it and i'm i'm since Fingers crossed that Ali Khalifa can play this week against Duquesne. Uh, Mark Pope says that he's going to be good to go. Ankle, when you roll your ankle, it doesn't take usually more than a week to really be 100%, but I fully expect Ali Khalifa to be out there doing what he can for BYU when they tip it off tomorrow against Duquesne. But the overall philosophy of this offense, it's absolutely brilliant in my mind because, once again, it's taking advantage of what BYU can recruit too heavily, and at the same time, it differentiates themselves in a conference that a lot of these teams are going to be carbon copies of each other. They're going to try and get the best athletes. They're going to try and out-athlete each other. BYU says, okay, you know what? We know that we're we're BYU and we're different and we don't have the athletes that we need to have uh, to compete with y'all out there. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to be that, uh, we're going to be the Jimmer range team. We're going to hoist it up from three and you're going to have to defend all corners of the court when it comes to the way we space our offense. And oh, by the way, if you leave the lane open, we'll go right to the rim and score it on you. I, I, I love this philosophy. It's very much an NBA model. And I'm a guy who watches plenty of NBA. Trust me, my day job, I'm wearing a hat here. If you watch this on YouTube, the KSL sports zone, we're the radio home of the Utah jazz. I watch a lot of NBA basketball and NBA offenses are far more advanced by and large than what college basketball has. But I love the fact that BYU has adopted an NBA esque model at the collegiate level. And it has benefited the Cougars this season. They finished fifth in the big 12 conference folks. Let's not overlook the fact that BYU has put together one of the greatest great regular seasons in program history. Now they will be remembered uh, by many for how they do in March madness. And we'll discuss more of that on our next edition of the podcast and plan on having that out uh, at some point uh, uh, Wednesday evening, going into that Thursday morning tip for BYU. But it's, it, it, it's a great idea because BYU once again, needed to differentiate themselves in a league that they were far 
far from being a top dog in, and they may still very well be far from being a top dog in this conference, but they finished fifth this year. And I think that's a good place for BYU to be. And it gives them an opportunity as they head into March Madness here to potentially make some noise if those shots start dropping. So yeah, maybe I didn't necessarily uh, report on it as heavily as maybe I should have, but Keegan Brown, you get to know that name because he is the brainchild. The, 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 his, his idea for this BYU offense, it's his brainchild, but Mark Pope decided to go with it, implement it, and stuck with it after the first year of it of really failing. Remember, they were 7-9 and nine in the West Coast Conference, kind of running this whole philosophy. And they just said, you know what? We're going to bank on the fact that these numbers are going to improve, and they benefited from it to, to a large degree this season. So hopefully that answered the question. If it didn't, feel free to reach out and we can discuss it further. But it is a very, very interesting dynamic out there. But I do love the fact that BYU is uh, pushing with it. And uh, it, once again, it's actually helping them stand out as well. Because remember, there's a lot of teams out there that, uh, once again, uh, look like uh, carbon copies of one another. Whereas BYU, they are distinct. They're unique. And that kind of fits with the whole thing of what BYU is. Provo's weird. Provo's unique. And BYU basketball this is exactly what they are. So let's embrace all that. And that all that comes with it as well. All right. We will wrap up today's show with some other news and notes. Uh, BYU football, some BYU baseball. We'll get to all of that as we roll on. Also, uh, some good news on the NIL front for BYU. We'll get to all of that as we roll on right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlights is brought to you by our friends at Nissan once again. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out above the rest, a team that's pushed it further than anybody else. And just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these teams were able to take it out uh, to the next level. Let's talk about the Oregon Ducks. They are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in the final Pac-12 tournament, punching their ticket to the big dance. Uh, seemingly out of nowhere, they say win life, go Rogue. And that's exactly what the Ducks have done here, my friends. Uh, so get with it today. If you want to take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada, you can go and find your next adventure in any one of those vehicles. The best part is they're all new, once again, 2024 models, and they have been redesigned, reimagined, and they're all available now from our friends at Nissan. So go to NissanUSA.com and check them out now. That's shop NissanUSA.com. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at Utah Community Credit Union. Now, Utah Community Credit Union has enhanced their checking accounts by uh, adding more benefits, more savings, and more online protections than ever before. A lot more. Paired with the most advanced and comprehensive mobile banking tools, elevated checkings must have financial product packed with lifestyle, security, and financial benefits, including free ATMs nationwide, an exclusive discount on any UCCU auto, RV, or personal loan, and an extra 10% cash back on every purchase made with your UCCU Visa cashback credit card. Think about that, my friends. They also have UCCU's credit score toolbox, a state-of-the-art set of tools designed to help you increase your credit score and enhance your financial well-being as well. It's all part of their enhanced checking. It's not enhanced, elevated checking. I apologize. And the best part is free when you do any one of the following. Use your credit or debit card 15 times or more a month. Make a monthly direct deposit of $500 or more or maintain an average daily balance of $1,500 in your account. Otherwise, UCCU's elevated checking is just $6 a month. So visit uccu.com to open an elevated check account today, my friends, or stop by any branch to open that account in person. You can do that as well. Uh, it's all courtesy of your friends over at UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. would encourage you guys, if you have not done so already, please consider subscribing to our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. It's been a really, really fun way to get you live updates from BYU football practices this spring. Uh, we created a bracket. Uh, if you want to have a chance to win some uh, prizes that I'm going to be footing uh, the bill for, uh, you have to join our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. If you want to do it very quickly, you get a 14-day free trial. $5 a month after that, but it's a great way to interact with the show and it's live updates. Literally, you can interact with the show via text message. Think about that. We all text every single day, seemingly every second of every day. Well, why not interact with the show and support it as well uh, by joining our Locked On Cougars Insider Group? You can get the links to it in the show notes below, whether you're watching this on YouTube or wherever you're tuning in uh, podcast-wise, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, you, you get the drill. All right, let's talk about the other news and notes out there in BYU sports. Let's talk about BYU football. Uh, there was a report uh, that the that Fox is going to have a lot of Friday night football games uh, this fall after uh, WWE SmackDown makes the move off of Fox Friday nights. And BYU is one of those teams, ostensibly, that's going to be playing one of those games, it appears, as their game against Oklahoma State has been officially announced to be played October 18th in Provo when the Cowboys uh, come to Lavelle Edwards Stadium. So expect to see a, maybe a, what, a 7 o'clock uh, kickoff 
on Fox. I don't think this is a bad thing at all. And funny enough, it actually sets up BYU to have a very, very nice layout of the schedule. Uh, between the middle of October and almost the middle part of November. From October 18th, once, when BYU once again takes on Oklahoma State at LES, they will travel the following week having an extra day of preparation to UCF, and then they have their bye week, and then they get ready for the annual rivalry game against Utah. BYU will essentially have almost four weeks, which is maybe like one game, it feels like, in that run there. So it should be an opportunity to uh, get healthy and obviously uh, make a stretch run, which includes a road game at Utah, home to Kansas, at Arizona State, State, and then home to Houston. That I think will give BYU an opportunity to kind of reset, uh, reassess where they're at at that point in the season and get back after. But I think it's also a big opportunity. We all know that BYU is uh, not uh, not uh, unfamiliar with playing on Friday nights. They did it throughout their entirety and the entire run of independence. And frankly, I love Friday night games. It frees me up on Saturdays to do everything else and watch a lot of other college football. You you all know that when I go to BYU football games, it's like an eight hour proposition. It's a full work day for me. And I miss out on watching a lot of games. BYU plays on a Friday night means I can sit down on Saturday and enjoy the other big games that are happening, whatever week that happens to be. So it looks like BYU have at least two Friday night games as it stands right now. They will have their first road game of the season on September 6th as they head to SMU in non-conference play. And then once again, October 18th when Oklahoma State comes to Provo. Uh, also, uh, on the BYU football slash basketball front, the Royal Blue Collective is officially uh, re-released or re, I guess, um, I don't know, redone their website. And they've added a very, very uh, awesome new way to contribute to their fund. And what it is, is they have uh, created these boxes. So they have a 1984 membership subscription, which is uh, 1984, $19.84. Uh, they get you a, a, a swag every three months. Uh, I believe it looks like it's a t-shirt of, of Jimmer for debt uh, coming up in the next box. Then you have the true blue membership, which is $50 a month that includes a jersey of Jimmer for debt. And then the MVP membership subscription is $99.95 a month. And that one looks like it's an exclusive uh, signed uh, swag, exclusive jer- T and signed jersey. And if you can get Jimmer for debt's jersey and that's signed, why wouldn't you go all in on that? You also can get exclusive jerseys of Dallin Hall and Jackson Robinson for $60 right now on the Royal Blue Collective. And the good news is all of that money, all the subscriptions to the boxes and also the jersey sales, all of it goes back into the Royal Blue Collective and benefits BYU student athletes, uh, most notably in, in this case. I think we all can acknowledge that football and basketball lead the way, but I can tell you the Royal Blue Collective is doing things across the entire athletic department for BYU. Women's volleyball, women's soccer, uh, baseball. They're, they're taking care of as many athletes, if not all of them, as they can. And the way to do that is to subscribe today. Go to the royalblue.co uh, to sign up for that and get on it today. It's a really, really a uh, fun way uh, to to support BYU athletes and also get yourself some swag along the way of Jimmer for that stuff. Come on. We're all, we all pine for the days of Jimmer mania. Well, there's a chance to relive it a little bit. And obviously I would encourage you guys to give that a shot. All right. Final thing on today's show, uh, BYU baseball uh, beat Utah Tech in St. George uh, last night, 11-6. to 6. I watched the tail end of that game and made it a little bit shaky uh, there in the ninth inning. A couple of base hits uh, to the wall uh, for uh, the Trailblazers. BYU uh, gets the win in the end. And BYU is on a little bit of a tear here, and it's really, really fun to see. And I got another comment uh, from Jason Andrews uh, on uh, YouTube. He says, is, is locked on just for football? Baseball just got their first Big 12 series win this weekend against the second-place team in the conference. I I feel like that is big news. Cougar Nation doesn't care either. Uh, okay, let's be let's be real, Jason. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're a relative newcomer to this podcast. I have made it a point, uh, to my detriment at times, to cover other sports in BYU's athletic department. Yes, football takes the lion's share of the attention, and basketball right now is what the basketball team, men's basketball in particular, is doing is going to get essentially the other uh, the other attention out there. I'm not ignoring BYU baseball. Let me be very clear about that. But the numbers, my downloads, the overall interaction when it comes to other sports outside of football and basketball, they're just not strong. I can appreciate the fact that you are a baseball fan. And trust me, I love going to baseball games. I love going to Miller Park. It's one of the more picturesque ballparks. I don't care at what level of baseball you're talking about. It's a great place to take in a baseball game. But I will uh, I will say this. I may not have daily updates on BYU baseball, but I can assure you I will have regular updates. And yes, BYU got a huge series win, two uh, uh, wins over the weekend against Houston. That's nothing to sniff at. And it's actually been very, very fun to see BYU. They're now three and three in conference play right now. Uh, It's a great uh, start to the season considering how 
Rough had actually started for BYU. They have righted the ship. So once again, they beat Utah Tech last night, 11 to six. Uh, they are now nine and eight or maybe no, no, they, I believe they're nine and eight on the season. I could be wrong about that. I haven't seen the updated standings. Uh, I apologize as a recording of this podcast. I'm actually going to refresh the page right now and see what it says. So BYU as it stands right now, they are 10 and eight. I apologize. They're 10 and eight on the season. They're above 500. That is awesome. And Trent Pratt obviously has his work cut out for him because the Big 12 is uber competitive in baseball, and they're going to be up against it, it feels like, to finish 500 in the conference. But, hey, they're 3-3 three and three so far. They had a really rough series on the road at West Virginia overall, but they righted the ship against Houston. And now after that game against uh, Utah Tech, they now head to one of the uh, bigger – players in the baseball sphere and in, in, in the big 12 when they head to texas tech this weekend uh that'll be a three-game series starting thursday night at 5 30 mountain time uh, you can catch it on big 12 now on espn plus and hey if any of you know who steve clowkey is the former longtime voice of the salt lake bees he called the utah tech game for byu radio last night and you're gonna get an extra dose of steve steve clowkey this weekend he's calling all three games of the series at texas tech steve is a dear dear friend he's one of the great voices of baseball in my mind and i'm a little bit of a homer that way but i've listened to steve for years in fact he's calling byu baseball this weekend you can be assured i will be tuning in because i just love hearing steve uh, call games he's a very very good play-by-play -play, uh, commentator, and I will be looking forward to that. So there you go. Uh, hopefully that answered your question, Jason. Once again, I don't take offense to it. I just want to be very clear that, uh, yes, BYU football is always going to be uh, priority one on this podcast. No, I'm not. I'm. I don't think I'm breaking any news to anybody. I've done this for, I've done 1500 plus episodes of the show. I would say that uh, 1200 of them at least had football as the main focus, but we do work in the other sports and I will endeavor uh, at your request to talk a little more BYU baseball, but uh, just understand that uh, there is a, there is a, there is a method to the madness of how I do things on this podcast. All right, there you go. That's what I got, that's what I got for you guys on uh, this Wednesday edition of the show. So thank you uh, to all of you for your support. As always, please continue to subscribe, rate, review the show, uh, do all the things that help us build this audience uh, via the, the algorithms out there on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. And appreciate all of you for making it your first listen today. And thank you to all of you once again, who are everydayers with us right here on the podcast as well. So until tomorrow, my friends, it's going to be game day, BYU and the big dance. What do they have to do to beat Duquesne? We'll talk about that tomorrow right here on Locked on Cougars.